right, three, two, one, we are live. Everybody gets to hear the three, two, one. It's so exciting because it is now a new episode of Bid Nerds. Welcome to Bid Nerds, everyone. My name is uh, John Polnick. I had to look at my own lower third to know what my name is. Uh, I'm one of the Bid Nerds, along with my partner, Michael Deeb. This is your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer and sometimes P-Car Talk or uh, P-Car Market and, and eBay and whatever other uh, automotive auction sites we happen to find interesting cars, but mostly cars and bids and bring a trailer. Um, today we have some pretty darn interesting cars. We do this every morning uh, at around the nine o'clock hour. It kind of depends on when we get up. It's Monday, so that's why we're late today. Uh, uh-huh. Michael Deeb, ha- you had a good weekend. Happy New Year, by the way. Yeah, Happy New Year to you too, man. Um, on New Year's Day, Esther and I took uh, Ruby, uh, the 84 Carrera out, and we did our first Breakfast Club rally uh up here in northern california we met under the golden gate bridge and went up into the marin and sonoma coast it was pretty awesome dude that sounds fantastic jp when they (laughs) when they hold a rally they cut it off at 200 cars wow (laughs) and so they get you know they get a couple dozen no shows but they still had i mean there was like 140 150 cars out there it was incredible and the cars are awesome they're well, all, okay, all cool. you know, the, these rallies and these drives where everyone gets together, I know they do the, the hangover run in L.A., you know, that's kind of a thing that everybody does, the New Year's New Year's Day car right. runs are kind of a thing, but, you know, you get these runs with so many cars, uh, you know, how much fun can you have in a rally like that? It's great from a social point of view, but from a driving point of view, doesn't it just get backed up? If you're not, like, one of the top, one of the cars, like the first two or three cars, you're pretty much stuck in a traffic jam for all afternoon. So when you when you sign up, they sign you up into three different run groups. Mm -hmm. And then from the meeting point, different run groups leave the meeting point to go to the the destination at Mm -hmm. different times. Mm -hmm. Um, So by that rationale, uh, that helps with the problem. The problem in Northern California versus maybe the really obscure hills in L.A. is these roads are being littered by tourists. So. Mm -hmm. It's not just that there were a lot of cars in our run group. There was just a bunch of other cars on the road, so we yeah. couldn't really go fast. But uh, but it was still fun. There was some good parts to it, but they don't run like we run in L.A., and it certainly don't run like we run in Vegas where we have the roads to ourselves. Yeah. So we had a, the hangovers over run on Saturday. So we skipped Friday, let yeah. ourselves kind of like get all the alcohol out of our systems. And then we met up on Saturday morning and we did a run down to Topak, which uh, if anybody nice. knows, it's over the old Route 66 uh, pass through Oatman just outside of Kingman, Arizona. So it takes about an hour to get out of the city and get to the good road, but it's pretty dang spectacular. Um, we had a great time. Uh, the PCA, our good friend Solomon, is now the president of the local PCA chapter so we kind of intersected with them it wasn't the same event we did that deliberately and there was a little bit of drama uh we had one of the guys (laughs) in the pca club um (laughs) kind of interact with well me and (laughs) and our friend jason um and it was yeah there were words at the end of that It's, it's interesting that you know it's like if you're on a group run you know, one thing that, 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 you know, most group runs kind of knows if so, you know, because these things aren't a race, we are driving spiritly, spiritedly, but, it, but it's not a race, right? When someone wants to go around you, you let them around, right? There's nothing worse than being stuck behind an RV on a twisty road and they won't let you around. The only thing that is worse is when someone who is in a GT3 RS that's purple won't get the hell out of your way and you're in a base 997 cab. What the hell, dude? So yeah. this guy <laughs> refuses to get out of the way. Um, our friend, uh, Jason and finds a spot that's safe and he goes to go around him he gets like next to him the guy in the gt3 steps on it right he won't let him by and uh jason's just like waving his arms around and then we get you know a half mile later and jason finds a spot to get around him and when he does go around him the guy gives him a double bird right and it's like bro we're all going to the same place we're all having lunch in the only restaurant where we're going that's gonna yeah. be awkward um Seriously. and so yeah i got i same thing i got around him and he double birded me and you know it was one of these guys again he's in a gt3 rs and i'm just in this little car so in the on the corners he just he's like Doo-doo-doo. but in the straightaways of course he wants to go 200 miles an hour so as soon as the straightaway happened i gave him a point by and he blows by me like he doesn't even go in the other lane blows rocks all over the place and then and flips me off i'm like okay all right, this is going to be fun. So we get to Topak, and uh, everyone's parked in the same spot. I parked my car, and I walked up to him, and 
I embarrassed myself. I uh, I uh, I gave him the right. I did not handle it well. I may have overreacted just a little bit. But so what, I apologize what, to everyone. But what was his defense for being so unobtuse about like letting people buy? I mean, is he worried that he's going to get a stone chip in his? Well, that was the thing. I mean, I ran up to him. I'm like, you know, he was wearing one of those, uh, one of those Porsche motorsports shirts that has like the 15 on it and, uh, like Porsche logos all over it. Right. You're like, okay, here we go. So I like across the parking lot, I'm like, Hey, number 15. And he like looks over (laughs) and the whole group looks over and I just march right up to him. I'm like the fact that you gave me a double bird when I passed you in a group run makes you the people and yeah. everyone's like whoa what is going on and some i don't know some octogenarian grabbed my shoulder and like he he, he gets it you got him all right let's yeah. let's move on and kept a, so i think jason would have bailed me out of uh, i don't know where do you go to jail in topak arizona I that probably, I don't know. probably they put you in a, they put you in a pen with the other cows or something you know yeah <laughs> yeah so that was unfortunate but we actually uh that sounds crazy but uh, we actually had a fantastic time it was a really fun run uh everyone there barring one guy was just great um <laughs> you know sometimes people uh, some you know it's that whole thing you have a bunch of money you go out and buy a fast car and i don't know I don't know. It doesn't make you a fast driver. Yeah, it's it's hard for people with the fastest car to let anybody else buy. It just well, is. yeah, and none of us really care how fast you go. Nobody wants anyone to drive outside of their skill level or drive more, you know, drive in a way that they're not comfortable. Um, that's fine. Drive slower, drive whatever pace you're comfortable driving. But if someone wants to go around you, just let them buy. And whatever yeah. you do, don't make it a dangerous situation. I mean, because that was the problem is that, the, is that our friend yeah. goes to go around the guy, you know, expecting and him he, to yield uh, so that he can get back over into the right lane as quickly as possible. And now all of a sudden he's in a drag race going and everyone has to make a decision. All right, we're in, now we're playing chicken on a public right. road. That's just, uh, ooh, yeah, man. that's, 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 that's an murder asshole. The guy. That's yeah. an asshole move. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Frank Frank Williams famously said about Michael Schumacher, the most important nut in the car is the one behind <laughs> is the one behind the wheel. And uh and there, there you go. Well, All speaking right. of nuts, uh the, what we do on this show is we don't just talk about stupid drives over the weekend. Uh we talk about the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. That's why you tuned in. Uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some of our picks last week because we do keep track. Michael and I have yeah. a little bit of a competition going, and yeah. typically I'm much better at this than he is. Ooh. Uh Ooh. and last week he started <laughs> off like, Do you know anything about cars? But he caught yeah. up. So uh yeah. how did how did our little uh, game of chicken workout yeah, last yeah. week you want to go over that yeah pretty good um jp i i was the doormat on monday um you <laughs> had a you had a great day on monday um basically you got four of the five correct and the beauty the highlight of the week for you came with our very first car on cars and bids there was a 2005 subaru baja sport and you got a Yahtzee. You guessed seventy five hundred, and that car sold for seventy five hundred. Uh, I didn't so guess. I predicted with authority and knowledge. That's right. Yeah, yeah. JP Polnick Nostradamus uh, <laughs> at your service. Um, so that was fantastic. So you got an asterisk behind uh, that one. On Tuesday, I fared a little bit better. I got three of the picks correct, and you got two of them correct. Mm. Uh, But we did pretty well. That was pretty evenly split. Uh, We had sort of the similar result on Wednesday, again, where I got three and you selected two correctly. Um, So we're looking pretty even going into the end of the week. But on Thursday, oh, JP, I I expected the fishing game warden to show up and and ask me to catch and release and set you free because, oh, I had four. Uh, you did get one, the CLK DTM, uh, you guessed correctly, but I got four. At the end of the week, I had 11, you had nine, but you did get the Yahtzee. They'll score twice, uh, so it was a pretty good week overall. We were pretty even, to say the least. Well, if I recall, I did give you some some extra <laughs> leeway there. Uh, I gave you a fighting chance because I wanted to see I wanted to see a little parody there. No, we had a good time. Um, I think that's one of the things that with this show is that we typically uh, we are pretty darn even in that regard. Sometimes one of us will get just a little bit ahead of the other, but uh, but uh, it is fun keeping track. And uh, we've got a whole new week. And not only do we have a whole new week, but we have a whole new year. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to today today's cars we've got some really cool stuff to talk about um let's go ahead and get into it what cars are we going to talk about on cars and biz and bring a trailer today what's our first car 
Okay, so let's start on cars and bids. We're going to look at a 1998 Ford Contour SVT. Uh, so JP, what? out out. I of mean, lit- what? <laughs> Yeah, this is an enthusiast car. I, I know that it looks like something you'd find in a rental parking lot near an airport. Somewhere in 1997? In yeah. Uh, Ford at the time, if you remember, JP, had some success selling high-performance Mustangs with the SVT Cobra moniker. They threw the same application at their F-150 pickup and made the Ford Light. And it could keep those in stock. So Ford thought they'd take this recipe and sprinkle it over their basic bitch little four-door subcompact sedan called Contour. And they created a Contour SVT. This car is ironic, I think. I don't know. It's front-wheel drive, two and a half liter V6. It makes a little more horsepower. It's not particularly heavy, but it's not particularly light. But the main thing is that it's front wheel drive. Um, so anyway, here you go. 195 horsepower, 170 pound foot of torque, 3,100 pounds, five speed manual. And uh, and it's got, you know, a little bit stiffer suspension, a little bit interesting aero kit. And, uh, and these cars were only like $25,000 when they were brand new. Um, but I don't think it was much of a success because Ford did not continue to make this car for very long. I don't know how long it lasted, but here is a rare one out of Lindhurst, New York, with just 47,000 original miles. Um, what, what could a car like this possibly bring? Is there anybody out there that even remembers this damn thing? Yeah, I mean, somebody wants this for a Redwood show. If Redwood shows were actually happening, this would be something that uh, you would want to bring there. I mean, you got to appreciate that Ford was taking a risk. I mean, that's not something that any of the American car companies really did back then was take risks. I mean, it's not like uh, now they have their, what is it, the Focus RS or whatever, um, which is a fantastic car, you know, but that thing's all-wheel drive and it's a hot hatch. You know, what did this compete with? What what year is this car again? This is a... 98. You know, I mean, so what are you competing with back then? You're in a Mark III Volkswagen GTI, which was probably the worst GTI of all time, but still light years better than this dog, you know, (laughs) whatever. Um, You know, for a little sedan like that, I mean, it is kind of interesting because you had like AMG C6, or what was it, C43s back then? The Mercedes little uh, sedans that had that kind of thing, you know, that little sport thing. But I don't think you could get those in a manual, so, you know, you got to give that something. But really, otherwise, what, an E36, I think, is probably who they're going after here. Yeah, but even those cars were closer to 300 horsepower. This car didn't even make 200 horsepower. And this car's front-wheel drive. Ford yeah. kind of when 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 the magazines reviewed this car, they like you know and again the magazines are fluff pieces. They they are all yeah. trying to get marketing dollars, but the magazines were saying, okay, if you're a Mustang and you need four doors, this is your car. And I'm like, no, it's not. You no, know, it's not. Yeah, you know, a, a, a Cobra, you know, a, a Cobra from this era had independent rear suspension and a 32 valve V8. That was a fun car to drive. I don't know that this was a fun car to drive. This car was just more fun to drive than the average Contour. So anyways, 25,000 bucks original MSRP. This car is sitting at $8,700 on 22 bids. And JP, for the audience to know, this is a no reserve auction. This car will sell. So there you go. What do you, what's your, uh, I think I'm going to say, let me jump right in JP. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. I'm going to go, yeah, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go $11,000 and we can move on. <laughs> Ugh, God. Uh, yeah. I don't think it breaks 10. Uh, so, oh, man. Yeah. 10 grand. Uh, I mean, I don't. I, I, it's sitting at eighty seven hundred right now, which yeah. is just absurd to me. There's no, 20, there's no way bits. I would give someone eighty seven hundred dollars for this. What on earth are you thinking? So many other yeah. cars have come across cars and bids, uh, hammer, you know, whatever auction block that this just. Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah, all right, let's move on because I'm just really sick of even thinking. Just having the words Ford Contour in my head <laughs> is really, I, I just can't believe we've wasted that many brain cells uh, recalling our memories Ugh. of Ford Contours. We got something better coming up. What else we got? Let's, yeah, let's, yeah, yeah. let's move I, on. I, just, I have to tell the audience how fun it is to sit here and make you uncomfortable on air. It's really fun for me. I don't know why. Okay, we're going to go to. I'm going to double bird you like that guy in the GT3 RS this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're gonna go to P Car Market, and JP, I, I have to confess, I, I saw a couple of really cool cars for this week on P Car mm. Market. But man, their platform is 
terrible. Really uh, so we, 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 we begrudgingly move our audience to peak market to look at this 1993 uh, Porsche Carrera 911. This is a C2 coupe, which is kind of becoming the holy grail. Yeah. 964s have been on the move. They, they only made them for a limited number of years. Uh, they were not incredibly massive sales successes, so there's not like a ton of them in this country. And um, quite often, these cars that are nice get selected to be reimagined by take your pick of of aftermarket sort of tuner that that build these cars into something even cooler than they were originally so to find a unmodified 911 coupe that's two-wheel drive from this era is becoming more and more difficult as such the guy who had this car spent thirty thousand dollars to bring it back to as good as it might have been when it was originally sold in 1993 the car is sitting on 59,000 miles and is offered to us out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, with $30,000 worth of recent work. They painted mm. the front bumpers and the hood. They sourced a set of cup, 17-inch uh, cup wheels and put new tires on them. And then they went through the entire car as far as maintenance and hoses and oil change and all this sort of stuff. So, I mean, they spent some money on this car. I even think they did some stuff to the interior. So uh, it, this car is basically mechanically refurbished everything on it the ac the heater the headlights uh gaskets everywhere they did a ton there's a laundry list of things that they did to bring this car back to to snuff but now what you have is a car that probably doesn't need service for two years and mm -hmm. it's a black on black c2 coupon cup wheels that's a gorgeous car yeah. um and i thought it was worthy of our attention i obviously really believe in it last night when i selected this car jp it was um, in the $50,000 range, and it has jumped up with just an hour to close, it has jumped up to $65,964. So I'd say this car has got to be pretty close to its reserve and maybe looking to sell. What do you think? Yep. I mean, 964s are skyrocketing in value. Like you said, they really were the ugly stepchild of their time. They didn't make a lot of them back then because like, kind of like uh, 08 and 09, 2010, uh, you know, Porsche really slowed down their production uh, because, you know, the economy wasn't that good. Plus they had the 993 coming out. Plus the 964 was just like the, at the time, everyone was like, golly, when are they going to finally retire this body style? Because <laughs> it's basically the same thing since the 60s and and consequently everybody bought the, the people that did buy them um had them for a while and then they hit the secondary market and they plummeted in value and they retreated poorly because the new owners just you know they were they were value buyers they weren't people that were really buying porsches because they loved porsches they just bought it because it was cheap and it looked like a porsche and so they didn't get maintenance and so many of them just were just destroyed so yes yeah. a black on black c2 uh, 93 is a significant year as well because they changed the clutch uh, you know they they changed so on the older ones on the 89 to 92s they didn't uh -huh. even have a there was no gasket between the transmission and the engine so they were super oh, right. prone to oil leaks uh, you know the, yeah. the rear main seal was just awful um, so they fixed all that stuff on the 93 plus a bunch of other little cosmetic stuff so yeah, yeah this mirrors. is the car you want yeah the new mirrors, mirrors I mean, this right? is yeah. yeah this this is this is the car. Um, right. How many miles did you say this car has on it? It's basically fifty nine thousand miles. JP. Yeah, wow. Uh, that is really uh, you know the only the only downside of this car is that it's coming from Florida. Um, but that but the it sounds like the people who have it did all the things that you would hope someone would do right. from a car from Florida, right. changing all the seals because that's the stuff that's just going to get destroyed and roached out. So yeah, yeah. Uh, but, we've yeah. seen some big numbers on P car market. You got a number for this car? Yeah, so here's the thing. You know, they overhauled the AC and all that stuff. Mm. So, JP, they, it seems like they really did. They, they, a lot of attention was paid to this car. So here's the thing. Uh, last night when it was at $58,000, I thought that it would come in around sixty-three, And I literally wrote a note to myself that this car should be close to seventy grand. But it looks like it's going to get there because overnight now the car is sitting at 65000 So I'm going to say $70,000, and I think it should sell there. If this car was at like 45,000 miles, this could very easily be an $85,000 car. And this car could still very easily go over my $70,000 bid. But I think that's the right number for a car um, that's had so much stuff redone. Although, I don't know, man, it, it could go higher. There you go. 70,000, I think it sells. Yeah, uh, I 
think, you know, my, my big concern, of course, is the platform. Will P car market be able to bring the money? Uh, if yeah. this car were on one of the other platform, well, particularly bring a trailer, um, yeah. It's definitely worth more, but I think this car is worth way more than seventy thousand dollars. I'm like way more because you're seeing C four coupes like eighty nines and nineties and ninety ones um, with way more miles or the same miles or more going for you know I mean the minimum for a nine six four coupe at any mileage is somewhere in the fifties. So yeah. you know then you add the fact that this is a C two. Well, that's got to yeah. put another at least another ten grand on it. Right. Uh, then you add the fact that it's a 93 that's got to be at least another 10 grand um so yeah i i am definitely gonna go higher i'm gonna say 75 and i think this thing could if the audience is here there are people i believe that would pay 80 or even right. 85 for this car maybe even higher because right. perfect color perfect year perfect just about everything yeah yeah jp could we buy it for 75 and put it on bring a trailer for 85 right yeah. i mean that's a <laughs> real like, that's a real thing yeah for sure yeah. Beautiful, beautiful car. Okay, really cool. All right, so we're Porsche heavy today, and yeah. let's stay on it. Let's jump over to bring a trailer, and we're gonna look at a car that. Oh man, all that sh all that glitters is not gold. Um, <laughs> out of Burbank, California, a 1996 Porsche 911 Targa, and JP, I just want to jump right in here because I'm not sure if you read, but everything I read about this car leads me to think that this is just not a good one. Mm. Um, the AC is not working. Uh, they put a new piece of glass, I think, in the sunroof. Um, they're, they're, I don't know. There was like paintwork and stuff. Th this car, it's got an accident. So it's damage on the, car on the Carfax, but it doesn't show an accident. It doesn't have the stock stereo. They reupholstered the leather. I mean, there are so many strange stories pertaining to this particular car. I should note that with the 993, when Porsche made the Targa, they did not sell a lot of them in the United States. And most of the ones that they did sell went with the automatic transmission. So for sake of argument, we had a 98 at uh, Godin and they made 121 Targas in 1998, but only 22 of those had a stick shift. Um, so if that was similar numbers in uh, 96, this is indeed a very rare car with the manual transmission and 70,000 miles. But this one just looks like it's had a rough life, and I'm not sure this car is going to bring the money that it should, being such a rare model and a rare color in this uh, turquoise green metallic. Yeah, I mean, the Targas are hot. Uh, I mean, so, you know, we've talked about Targa 993s before. They are really a cabrio with a hard top put on it. It's basically a big old glass roof that's uh, that's grafted to a, a cabrio. So they do they are prone to the same kind of cabrio issues. Not that I have a problem with cabrio issues. I'm a cabrio 993 owner, as everyone knows. Um, you know, this car, I, I really like these a lot. Um, I'm not a fan of this color. You know, it's kind of that Honda... Uh, the <laughs> 80s so Honda Accord green, you know, totally, teal green yeah. with yeah. gray interior that just does not hold up well. But that's my opinion. It seems like I'm usually in the minority there when it comes to weird colors on Porsches. People love these weird colors. I think if it had a, you know, black or black and, you know, black dash and the gray interior you could live with, but this sea of gray is just not a place that you want to spend much time. Um, but it's probably, a, 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 you know, I mean, it's a, it's a 993. These cars are fantastic to drive around. You say that the glass has been replaced uh, or I, one of the glass panels. Um, I, that's a good thing. One would presume that, that they yeah. fix some of the other problems because those, those target tops are big mechanical sunroofs with plastic gears and they are just notorious right. for failing. Um, yeah. All the, all the little clips that have to move for the window to like pop up and slide on those rails, everything yeah. that that piece of glass, which is heavy has to go through is plastic and they fail. Yeah. They just, yeah. it's not when it's not if it's when. And so the, those things, it looks like this has been redone, but I don't know. There, there was just some fishy stuff with this, especially the damage report. Uh, Cause there's no detail as to what the damage was. So I, I don't know this, this just, I think this car is going to suffer and not bring the money that it should. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. That appeal to that color is interesting. What I've learned about the Porsche community is that they like the cars that you know, the, the, the value is in the cars that have uh, less replicas out there. So if a car is a limited production run or if a car, uh, you know, only a few of them were built in a really obscure color, those cars have great appeal to the Porsche community. 
And so yeah. there you go. It's hurting this car too. That it doesn't have any pictures really of the engine, anything underneath. I mean, there's just like, there's very little information here. Uh, and that's going to be a big, big problem for this car. Uh, is there a reserve on this thing? Uh, there is, and we don't know where. And yet yeah, JP, I wrote a uh, damage report leak. Uh, the AC is leaking. The, it needs to be, it was reupholstered and there's literally no photos. JP, if you go to the listing, um, there's no extra photos. Like all the photos that they put in their bucket didn't mm -hmm. require them to put on the bottom one, like plus 75 more photos or whatever. Yeah. They have literally no additional photos. They didn't even fill out the minimum requirement for images, which I think is a huge mistake for this auction as we've yeah. come to learn. So yeah, that's going to hurt the seller. Uh, do you have a bid on this car? Yeah, I, so the car is sitting at $53,666. So the mm. evil emperor <laughs> is looking to buy this car. As such, I think this car is going to stall out at $57,000. I think the buyer should let it go at that price, but I'm not convinced that this car will sell at fifty seven dollars because, again, if this were a better ad or some of those things were addressed, this car should bring considerably more money. Yeah, I'm definitely going under. I'm going 55. I think it stalls out. Uh, there's no way this thing is going to hit reserve. Um, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, look, if if all the information was there uh, or were there, and and this car, if the car does have issues, that's fine. A nine nine three Targa uh, in good running driving condition with all you know th that's an open book. Uh, yeah. with full disclosure, people are fine with all these things. They just want yeah. to know. And the fact that you're kind of in this situation where you just don't know, you're rolling the dice, you're going to drop over $50,000 on a car that yeah. you've never even seen. I mean, that's not, it's not going to happen. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this, this auction is a big old fail. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bummer. So, all right. Uh, neat car, but, uh, not the one I would choose. And I'm sure you agree. Let's move on to the next uh, car. What do we got? Abs absolutely. JP. I'd much rather have that, <laughs> that nine, six, four. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, this next pick is really exciting. Um, maybe you can tell us if you know, uh, this was a viewer suggestion that we look at this particular car out of Blacksburg, Virginia, Blacksburg, Virginia mm. is a BMW 328 XI wagon, six speed manual, m sport package this car ticks almost every <laughs> cool box bmw has left um this is also a no reserve action <laughs> the car is sitting on just sixty-five thousand miles and i'm telling you jp when we looked at that other bmw wagon last week i'm not convinced you knew this particular model even existed that you could get the m aero package you know with the suspension tuning and then this also has the M interior package, which has the wheels and the steering wheel and the shifter and all this other cool stuff. This is a really neat car. <laughs> this is a unicorn. Yeah, I was I was unaware or had just forgotten that you could get an M Sport six speed wagon. And here yeah. it is in basically the perfect color combination oh, too. For I sure. mean, silver on black with the. Yep. It even has the, if I recall, it has the brushed aluminum trim on the interior. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, it does. Al aluminum inlay. That's part, oh, of, part of it. I mean, yeah, cool. this is almost, if not more, of a unicorn than that black on black 93964. I mean, it where is. are you going to yeah. find? And low miles on top of it. Super I mean, low miles. Yeah. about the only thing that's negative here is that it's an East Coast car. So you are right. going to have to be concerned about maybe some corrosion underneath. But this no. is just the perfect everyday driver. This is, I mean. Look at those seats. Uh, Look at so the bolsters. Nice. Those yeah. seats are so <laughs> comfortable. JP, yeah. I'm telling you, man. BMW, when they make a sports seat versus their standard seat, it is unbelievable how comfortable those things are. They're this really car, nice. This car, yeah. It was suggested to us, by the way, by uh, our good friend Sahan Faizi, who has been a third nerd Sahan! on the show before. Sahan, oh, yes. Reaching out to Sahan, yeah. Happy New Year, Sahan. What's his, uh, what's his Instagram handle? It's hilarious. Uh, Persian Pillow. Persian Pillow. The Persian Pillow. The Happy Persian New Year, Pillow. Friend. Happy New to, Year. To your yeah, I mean, family. this Sahan, thing. we love you even has the pano and the rear seats fold down. Oh. I mean, why the hell would you buy an X3 or X anything, really? I mean, yeah. this this has everything. Oh, yeah, man, totally. I want this car. It's a good thing it's on the East Coast because I won't bid on it because it's an East Coast car. Not necessarily because of just that. I just don't want to go through the hassle of going and getting it. Um, <laughs> but, man, uh, yeah, got to love it. We could sit here and talk about it all day. What's your bid on this car, Michael Deeb? Okay, so last night it was at $17,000 on wow. 10 bids. Right now it's at 19,250 JP on 
it still says 17 bit so i'm not sure what's going on with their system mm. something is not right but i believe this car is going to sell because it's no reserve i'm going to sell at twenty two thousand seven hundred dollars remember this car was fifty thousand dollars brand new on the msrp yeah you know i mean geez this car with a six-speed manual uh this car is probably going to bring twice as much as the automatic version of the identical car uh right. which would be around 10 or 11 grand so yeah i'm gonna i mean you're dang it you are spot on um so i'm gonna bet the under and just go a little conservative and say 21 okay. i think 21. it's gonna okay. yeah boy it, what am i thinking uh it's probably gonna take off from there but yeah what a what a fantastic car do you want imagine imagine jp if this car i'm saying it's basically around 23 if this mm -hmm. car were to bring 25 just just hear me out mm -hmm. a fifty thousand dollar bmw station wagon yeah in the united states that is nine years old out of warranty and has 65,000 miles is we're saying is still worth basically 50% of its original MSRP. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty incredible. So. Yeah, I mean, come on, BMW. Come on, car manufacturers. What do we learn from this stuff? It's like, yeah. do you guys not look at any data from anything that's not uh, <laughs> an inch and a half past your nose? I mean, it's like, make some gosh dang manuals. What is wrong with yeah. you guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, it's it's just i don't get it you know they just yeah. refuse listen to, to, listen to us telling the, the the board of directors at gm to take advice from the bid nerds yeah well i mean they maybe they'd actually uh you know have a company that makes some money who knows all right so uh we both love this car how awesome would your garage be if it had both oh, this and that uh, 964 oh that black and black 964 uh, the, that would that, be yeah. ultimate garage wouldn't it seriously that's a great pair of cars yeah sure. yeah uh yeah. all right uh with the last car of the day is what oh this okay. one's <laughs> Oh, this, this, car. this is, yeah, JP, you picked a humdinger here. So we're looking at, <laughs> hear me out now. We're looking at a, I got a lot of numbers for this car. Okay. Yeah. 1993 Mercedes-Benz <laughs> SL600 Rentec SL74. So Gesundheit. basically, yeah, basically somebody took their $125,000 brand new 93 SL600 with a V12 and they took it to Rentec and they worked up a, an invoice for $78,000 worth of parts and labor to create this masterpiece, uh, which is basically a Mercedes Benz two seat Roadster convertible. It's got a removable hard top and an electronic soft top. These were really cool cars that handle a little bit better than you might think they would. They, they are essentially grand tours, but they're surprisingly capable on a back road these are wonderful cars to drive and back in the day these were you know this was the palm springs beverly hills boca raton i've made it car you know like these are this is the country club mobile if ever there was one but get a load wrap it wrap your head around these numbers jp the standard v12 that mercedes makes was 390 horsepower and 420 pound foot of torque after the the engineers and devious minds at Rentec get their hands on it they bore the motor out to 7.4 liter hence the sl74 nomenclature Jeez. and when they're finished this motor naturally aspirated i think makes 575 horsepower and 584 pound foot of torque this thing is freaking fast so there you go now this car if you do the math this car was over two hundred thousand dollars 17 years ago and the car is languishing right now at fifty-two thousand dollars, but it's got a lot of action it's on 23 bids out of pittsford new york on bring a trailer there you go oh man i'm so excited about this car it looks so cool <laughs> i love that look at the stereo or the oh, you know underneath the little yeah. phone i mean that is just yeah. the design the bauhaus kind of bauhausian yeah. straight angular lines here um totally. it would be better if it didn't have the wood trim but i mean oh man this car just gets me so going um uh, it does remind me of the 500 sl i got to drive back in uh, texas back in the same year i i may have been a drug yeah. mule back then um this yeah but i <laughs> I wasn't doing it in a almost 600 horsepower car. I mean, those numbers, those are, those are modern numbers. This is a car from 1993. And that is, I mean, that's like a, oh. that's like a modern AMG type car. I mean, this is, it is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Now I got to think that um, if you do own this car and you are going to run it, 
oh boy, you gotta you you're gonna have to have a mechanic or someone that really knows their Mercedes in your oh, corner because I don't know that. what you do if something goes, goes wrong slightly yeah. wrong in this thing. I mean, that's just a yeah. little a little and, terrifying. And again, JP. This car made so much torque that the suspension, the differential, and the transmission are not up to the task. So yeah. if as, as silly as it sounds, you want to drive this super powerful car gently because if you go stomping it around uh, or trying to shift it automatically with that lever in the thing, you're going to break this car in half. Like, I mean, it makes so much power. And and back in, in those days, it's hard to believe, 17 years ago, 600 horsepower and 600 pound foot of torque was unheard of. It just, yeah. Nothing on the road was designed to handle that kind of power. And now, you know, there's every manufacturer has a 600 horsepower car. But back then, nobody did. And so, you know, you got to be careful. Yeah, and you got to think that, uh, you know, it, like a like a Viper of the era or something like that. I mean, if it doesn't break when you stomp on it, it, it it's going to be prone to doing all kinds of things that you're not going to expect. But at least your hands will be on that uh, that perforated leather steering wheel, and they'll be oh so comfy when you go into yeah. uh, oncoming traffic or in yeah. a ditch or something. JP, that last part of the clip you just showed, the, yeah. his particular hardtop – is a is a tinted glass hardtop with, yeah. with a manual screen. I mean, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, love this car. Well, okay, so I mean, it's anybody's guess because it's not like there's any I comps know. for this thing, right? I mean, totally. what yeah. the hell? Who's gonna buy this? Uh, for I, you, yeah, what you, you got a bid? You got some? Yeah. So what do you think? So it's interesting that this car's really been driven. It's got fifty two thousand miles on it. Now, if this car had twenty five thousand miles, I'd say it's gonna bring. 85 to 95 thousand dollars but the 52 thousand miles which shouldn't hold it back but i just it's it's i don't know man i don't think it's going anywhere i i say 65 thousand bucks and i'm not sure it sells at that because i'm sure Mm. the owner thinks it's worth a whole lot more i I, but again we're shooting in the dark here jp so 65 thousand is my bid 65,000. All right. Yeah. I don't think it's going anywhere near that. All I'm going to say 60 and, uh, I don't even think it makes 60 to be perfectly honest, but I'm just going to, okay. just from a betting point of view, um, 20, yeah, I mean, 23 bids. 20 yeah. Bids. I mean, it could get there. I don't know. I mean, at 60 grand, if that, uh, if that 993 target gets to about the same place, which car would you rather have? Oh, no, I, I don't, I don't, I mean, ugh, a teal that's... green, a, te- a Honda teal green, uh, on gray, uh, Porsche Targa 993 or this black on black monster that you can just like eat children with. This thing is so can't, can't, why evil. can't I have the why can't I have the 964? That's the car I want. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I guess it's the same price too, right? Well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I still think that 964 is going to go for way more than this car. Yeah. I think this yeah, I mean, yeah, so yeah. I I don't put those two together because I just yeah, I think the 964 is obviously just going to yeah. yeah anyways um all right well this will be interesting to watch and see at the end of the day and how this one shapes up uh i yeah. hope it's not on reserve i hope someone gets to buy this car and gets to drive it where is yeah. this car where is it do you know pittsford new york pittsford new york not pittsburgh yeah. pennsylvania all right so right. this is not a car that you're going to fly out and drive home this time of year this is something you're going to have to no ship out if you're on the west coast so that's too bad because that would be one hell of a road trip car oh um, man yeah. All right. Well, gosh, see, that's just the kind of thing we nerd out on, on <laughs> the daily nerd out on the most interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. This is bid nerds. So we really do appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We've got a lot of new subscribers and a lot of people uh, making comments and we really, really appreciate that. We love having audience suggestions like we did today from our friend Sahan. Uh, we've got some audio suggestion cars for later in the week. Uh, that means yeah. if there's a car that you want us to review, we will happily put that in our our roster uh yeah. and we have, uh go ahead later later in the week we have something from john alcantara do we mm-hmm. not yeah he may oh, even third awesome. nerd us uh yeah, he might third nerd cool. us on friday we'll see oh, yeah I yeah should. i think he yeah. should and i think he should buy that car so i do well you know ahead. our friend little... jeff should be buying that car that's who uh, needs to own jeff that Chu? car yes oh, yeah. jeff yeah. calling you out brother uh yeah. it's All time right. for an air-cooled car and this one yeah. that we've got coming up at the end of Seriously the week special. might just be it yeah. all right we'll yeah. tune in every day at around the nine o'clock hour on youtube and facebook uh for bid nerds my name is john polnick along with my partner michael deeb i'm coming to you from las vegas nevada and he is in the san, san francisco, francisco bay area so yeah. we are all over the place we're not in the same room you may think that we're right next to each other but nope <laughs> this is all digital stuff uh so 
hey, hit that subscribe button, like, share, spread the word. We really need your guys' help because we are a new YouTube channel and uh, we love our audience. Uh, we will see you guys tomorrow at around the nine o'clock hour for even more interesting cars and cars and bids and bring a trailer. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. Thanks, JP.